Good morning. I'm Viola Harris, and I'm a current board member and past president of the North Carolina Black Alliance. I'm very excited today to introduce our entertainment for today. Desan Ahanu is an award-winning poet and performance artist, a cultural organizer and creative strategist based in Durham, North Carolina. He is an alumni, Nasir Jones Fellow at Harvard's Hip Hop Archive and Research Institute, a resident artist at the St. Joseph's Historic Foundation, the Haiti Heritage Center, and visiting lecturer at the University of North Carolina Chapel Hill. He has performed across the country, appeared on national radio and TV, published four books of poetry, then featured in various uh, periodicals and released numerous recordings. As a strategist and builder, Desan uses art and culture as a foundation and framework for creative solutions to business needs internally and externally. He works with organizations and institutions looking to deepen connection and engagement, reach farther and increase capacity through creative and iterative design. Desan is currently managing a grant funded initiative as the Rothwell Mellon Program Director for Creative Feature Futures with Carolina Performing Arts. We are excited to have him pin an original composition for the North Carolina Black Summit. Here's Desan Ahanu. They say the dim asphalt and burdened shoulders comprise the first place the city forgot. A place where mama's God and uncle Lester's gem beam make the pain easier to forget. A place where smiles dance under street lamps Laughter billboards the corner stores and hallelujahs fill the pews beneath stained glass. A place where heroes stand picturesque on cardboard stapled the popsicle sticks or airbrushed on the front of dull and t-shirts. This place, this place be over patrolled, underfunded, and bastardized for the black and brown parliament and use the weed resilience brown here. But it cannot be erased. It cannot be bleached, bloodied, a burden less than, it cannot be demonized or stigmatized into disappearing. This place is beautiful. We will never let its sight become foreign to our eyes. We will never let its taste become bland to our tongue. We will never let its smell become anything less than grease and freedom. Never let the sound be anything less than a joyful noise. We will never let its touch be anything other than a welcoming embrace home. Black access to political power, the political process in this country has been fraught with violence, oppression, misinformation, and disenfranchisement. Yet the Black vote has increasingly become the target of an intense bipartisan tug of war. Black folks are intended to be counted, but not considered, included, but not involved. Representation is often treated as civic tokenism, where Black faces fill seats with no support or room to make critical and necessary change. The only way to challenge this type of hegemony is to organize, strategize, and mobilize a Black political response. That means fostering and nurturing political leadership and building a foundation for Black political participation that centers the Black community and lifts up Black voices. And in 2006, the answer came. With a concerted effort to provide a haven for Black leaders, and that answer was the Alliance of North Carolina Black Elected Officials. It was established with the intent to try to get Black folks on the same page when it came to political activity. Now, the Alliance is a 501c3 organization built to serve all of the Black elected officials and organizations in the state, the mayors, the school board members, the city council members, the people who serve in the legislature, the legislative Black caucus, and the Black judges. These public servants were invited to come together at the first NC Black Summit. The name itself was a statement about who they were and where they wanted to go. The message but it was time to work towards a collective focus on the issues that were common to black folks across the state. See, it was more than just connecting and fellowship. It was an incubator for black political thought. There were training sessions and roundtable discussions. There were opportunities for folks to sit together and learn from each other. Attention was focused on things like education, criminal justice, environmental justice, political empowerment, economic empowerment with the recognition that if you're black, you face the same kind of problems. The information and strategies gained to be taken back and applied to each participant's districts has made the summit a destination and a catalyst. 
for the alliance was not about chasing the illusion of homogeny. It was about establishing consistent goals and approaches to operating in the political environment that we live in, that grounding would allow the alliance to adjust to the differing needs of black folks and the circumstances they face across the state, would also allow them to navigate the reality of cognitive dissonance. What mattered was being in community with folks who see the issues and want to address them, to fight with people who may have a grasp on your point of view, to know you are not alone. It inspired hope. And it was understood that there was so much to do, but that the reality is easier to handle when you know that there is also a cadre of dedicated folks who have been able to do so much, a cadre eager to help each other hold steadfast in their work to improve Black lives. See, there is a joy that comes with seeing groups of children playing in the open field. A twinge in your gut that comes when passing the sun-kissed testimony in tattered clothes, holding court on a corner, a smile that forms when a phone call affirms that hard work has placed another snapshot of Black excellence where the world can see. An affirming head nod that says, in a room of obstacles and expectation, we belong here. There's a pride that beams and a youthful recital, tears that accompany athletic achievement, a hug that started pistols, the next glorious gathering of friends' laughter that chronicles the best of times, tears that fall during the worst of times. And these are the moments that let us know that there is so much worth fighting for. See, I know a cadre of will talking about toppling institutions and dismantling systems of oppression in the back room of a church two prayers from a liquor house down the street from a school named after an optimist around the corner from a complex considered an eyesore with low property values that is birth more blessings than bastards. See, these dedicated rebels are planning demonstration, coordinating childcare, identifying roles and tasks, building capacity with a passion unmatched, and their discussions are joyful noise. See, these are the visionaries who know that there is so much worth fighting for. Now, there's promise wrestling with purpose in a classroom during the late hour. They inspired by the tales of ancestors before, searching for victory after. They came with questions and are leaving with a focused strategy. See, this is where developing minds seek greater understanding past professors and syllabi. Together, here, careers and families are distant actualizations of a tuition paid journey. Today, today is where they sharpen their skills at crafting a wonderfully sculpted happy ending tomorrow. They will march and demand, pushing administration to consider that dorm rooms are not margins, that the blueprints of their future should have the etchings of their own hands, and they, they are everything worth fighting for. See, there are neighborhoods to reclaim, lost lives to honor with resilience, names to say, legacies to build, ancestors to invoke. There are texts to review, positions to be held, stories to be told, lessons to be learned, insight to be passed, programs to be developed, work to be done. My God, don't you feel it? Can't you see it? There is truth clothesline along the horizon hung by angels who want us to see that this world is meant to be so much more. There, drying by the light of the sun is woven inspiration covered in the tears of those who left before the battle was won and sitting in your house right now. is a mirror with an honest tongue and a glimmer in its eye waiting to have a heart to a heart conversation with you. It has a message to deliver in familiar clarity, a promise to make, a revelation to share, a desire to let you know that if you take a look there, that it will show you everything we're fighting for. Now, the beautiful thing about the work that the Alliance was doing was recognition of the need for an increase in breadth, depth, and capacity. And Advanced Carolina was established to meet that need. A new organization that had the capacity to raise money for a broader array of activities in the political arena, like supporting candidates. An organization that could work alongside the Alliance on behalf of Black folks in North Carolina. An organization that could put boots on the ground in communities across the state. If the Alliance could be an incubator for Black political action, then Advanced would be the base for Black political activity. So when thinking about all the things that Black folks face and important to stress what's at stake and where the opportunities for advocacy exist, what kinds of decisions are being made and what are the opportunities to impact those decisions and how can you influence those outcomes? How can you help shape the trajectory of where the community is going? When building something sustainable but also transformative, you must consider what it means to work towards your community's well-being. 
So much work is done in communities by folks who are actively in service while also managing full-time jobs, being involved in the local church or leading congregations themselves and taking care of families or other responsibilities. See, Advance can provide service and support for their efforts. Full-time professional staff able to handle grant dollars, to handle compliance and financial reporting, to develop social media and digital media strategies, plan community events, and coordinate resources, advance, can have an impactful, influential presence on the ground to be able to become a stakeholder and engage year-round beyond election cycles. See, Black life has been held in the balance of a two-party system throughout American history, a bargaining chip a chess piece or a tipping point. The democratic process has been a gauntlet for black folks. Democracy is an ideal that many black folks are still waiting to actually realize. Systematic inequity, institutionalized racism and white supremacy are constant obstacles. Implicit and explicit bias plague interactions in businesses, schools, meetings, social service offices and medical facilities. There has been, there has to be active and ongoing efforts to disrupt the pervasive impact together on all fronts. In addition, there must be efforts to change the dynamics of the system's policies at work on Black lives. And in the midst of it all, when there's tension, when there's fire, when there's opposition, when there's pressure, what I do know is what we have proven time and time again is how ready and equipped we are for how prepared we are, for how, for how resilient we are. We have seen uprisings. We will continue, continue to see a charge towards change and transformation, towards liberation on all fronts, from courtrooms to legislative chambers, all the way down to neighborhoods where we see each other and see, see the desire for something different in each other's eyes. I say to my people of ash and soot, we know fire. It's a lit match to gunpowder turn kin into kindling, ritual burial, the residue for resistance, and those left were bundled on the cargo ships and those who knew how combustible colonization was sought the water as refuge. The rest were bundled and stacked into fields like wood in the living room of white supremacy with overseers like chimney sweeps who made sure the notes sung in those fields never reached the heavens. I sent notes to those in the woods who could read the message along the skyline. See, we know burning. Because devils ain't never cared when they poured kerosene on as long as they got to see the flames. Lit match the body. Molotov cocktail to home, bomb to building. What else can you say about those who set crosses ablaze in front of the blessed when they were trying to sear away the truth that Melanin was crucified for their sins? Sometimes I think that we got stuck with a white Jesus because he needed to be wrapped in gauze from the third degree burn. See, we know ash and soot can script prophecy in the smoke See the deadening as the promise of renewal. Know that we got a covenant with the earth and it will always help us turn desolation into ceremony. We just got to give our incandescent dreams back to the mother who helped inspire them. Sit at her feet as she teaches us to cook a phoenix from scrap and lay spread new hope like Resurrection Sunday. Because ain't we the ones that found glory in the clearing and turned that into a church? And everywhere we are is a sanctuary and every breath is a gospel. See, we can so dress up at Easter because the ongoing will to rebuild deserves ceremony. It's coded affirmation, like the spirituals taught us how to get through. This pageantry tells us how to get on. And you ever think about the black and gray we dress ourselves in to send our beloved gone home? Don't it seem so fitting for us? I always wondered why the church house smelt smoldering, why the wailing sounded like sirens, why each I love you shed tear and held hand seems so necessary. Soil got to be treated for a new blossoming. And we know what it is to work fields around here. Know what it is to call magic from the dark to build something out of nothing. Hell, they made us build this America. And then got mad that we didn't pyramid their empire and appropriate astronomy. So now they shooting stars trying to understand the resilience of the night sky. See, we ain't afraid to fight. This ain't no blaze that can take our importance, can take our brilliance, can take our impact, can take our imagination, can take our genius. 
you know, fire that can remove all that we have done, all the places we have shown up, the roles we, and titles we have held, the difference that we have made. We are going to continue to do good work, to cause good trouble. We are going to continue to laugh and cry, to smile and dream to live full, to live free, to dance with the same legs that crumble in misery, to create family and survival manuals, policy and change, to continue to find survival in the midst of the madness that they revel in. You will never be afraid of fire. As we beautiful, charge Genesis chapter one, verse two, will just continue to come through with the light. It is an honor and pleasure to be with y'all today. Thank you for all that you do. And I just wanna say that you are so very necessary. Thank you.